Um, on Iran, forgive me for saying so, but I think that from this podium, both yesterday and today, we've heard some divergent messages from you as to how long the administration and the P5 plus one are willing to let these negotiations last. Yesterday you stated, I'm paraphrasing but faithfully, uh, as long as these conversations continue to be productive, we'll continue to have them. You also stated yesterday, however, that the U.S. and its partners would not wait until June 30 to walk away if necessary. Mm -hmm. So right there are two divergent questions, or two divergent statements, I should say. So is it the case that you'll have them as long as they're productive, or there is actually some sort of ticking clock here? Well, um, I think what I would try to help you understand, James, in terms of our position, is that we do not envision a scenario where we would abruptly and arbitrarily end the talks that are productive. Uh, but at the same time, these conversations are not open-ended. Uh, that we have been serious about the way that we believe it is most effective for us to structure these negotiations, uh, and that is to structure these negotiations in a way that a framework agreement, essentially a political agreement, could be reached um, by the end of March is what we said. We're in April 1st now. Um, because we want to preserve uh, ample time, uh, you know, essentially two or three months, for the technical experts to then sit at the table uh, and have a conversation about how the numbers are going to work inside this broader framework agreement. And we believe it's important to leave ample time for those conversations. And so uh, that's why um, I have been unwilling to set a uh, definitive, though arbitrary, date, uh, but at the same time been tried to be clear about the fact that we're not operating in an open-ended environment here.